<clears throat> like I mentioned, um, our strike them out process. Okay, so when we're game planning on Sunday, uh, these are how we start to fill in our strike them out um, plays and, and, and grids. So our offensive line coach, he works on the rent run game, right? That makes sense. Our tight end coach, he's going to uh, work on the run game with our offensive line coach, and he's also going to be looking at pass protections. Our running back coach is our screen coordinator, so he's looking at our screens. And for us, screens are any time that we release linemen downfield. Um, bubbles, smoke screens, those type of things, we don't consider screens. That's a different part of our offense. So um, our running back coach is looking at screens that involve us releasing linemen downfield. Our wide receiver coach is our pass game coordinator, so he's working on our pass game. Uh, and then myself, I set the formations each week. We're going to carry eight to ten formations, and then I'm obviously involved with all of this. Um, I'm working with all of those guys on what their focus is. So I'm a part of all of it with them. I'm working on the run game, the screen game, the pass game, looking at pass protection, all of those things. So before we leave the office on Sunday, our strike amount has been filled in completely. Uh, we use those slides in both paper and video scattering reports for the kids in our Monday meetings. So the, the same game plan process that we're looking at, that we're using, is what the kids are going to be looking at when they get to, to meetings on Monday and they get the game plan installed. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like. Strike them out. Um, it's a silly name. Uh, started years ago, we just kind of started building on it, um, using baseball terms just because we didn't have anything else to say. And then we started referring to it as a strike them out and it kind of stuck. It wasn't anything that was on purpose. We didn't say, hey, how can we build a strike them out? Uh, just kind of what we were jokingly call it, calling it, and then it stuck. Uh, it's a template designed to simplify the game plan process uh, and the game planning process. It's designed to share the game plan process throughout the entire staff. That's what we just talked about. It's not me sitting in an office, uh, coming up with plays, and then teaching other, other coaches. Our coaches are, are every bit as responsible for what we do on Friday night as I am. I just get the fun part of getting to call the plays that those guys have come up with. Um, it builds ownership from our coaches and an understanding of the weekly game plan. We're all in it together. We're all pulling the, the same rope. We'll, we know why we're calling plays because we've all designed the plays together. It's also a template that allows us to plan and execute practice more efficiently um, while allowing more coach participation in the, the practice planning process. So now that we have strike them out, uh, we're able to use those templates. Um, so our, our wide receiver coach, our pass game coordinator, he's going to script and plan all of our past stuff in practice. Our offensive line coach uh, is going to script and plan our run periods in practice and those type of things. So that uh, frees me up. I'm able to watch a lot more film now because I'm not scripting plays all, all day during the day. And I script just the team sessions. So wide receiver coach has seven on seven. Uh, running back coach has our screen drill. O-line coach does inside run. And then I do our team sessions. So it's been great for us as far as sharing that load, also creating ownership with our guys uh, when it comes to practice scheduling and uh, scripting. Okay, so the way we build strike them out, um, each formation that we have is going to have the ability to carry five different types of plays. We'll have a strong run. Um, for us, that's in the direction of the formation strength. If it's a bounce formation, field becomes the strength. So we're running to the field, that's the strength. If it's a bounce formation, two by two, uh, double tight, four wide, whatever it might be. Um, next is weak run. We define weak run as a run that in the direction away from the formation strength. Again, if it's a bounce formation, that should say uh, the field becomes strength, so the boundary would be the weak side of the formation for us. Um, not that it's weak or strong, it's just a way to define it so that we know which way that run is going. We'll carry a quick game pass concept. Um, for us, that's anything that would be a, a one-step or three-step stick concept. We're getting the ball out quick. Um, you know, your five to 10 to 12 yard intermediate pass concepts is what we're looking at there. Drop back. Um, we define our drop back as <clears throat> passes that are full field pass concepts. So we're going to take a full three-step drop. The quarterback's going to have a full field read, um, you know, thinking things like Y cross, four bird. Um, we don't run mesh, but mesh would fall in that category for us, those type of things. Uh, and then screen, like I talked about earlier, screen is any of our concepts in which we release linemen downfield. RPO screens are not included. So bubble screens, those type of things are not included in our screen game. 
Um, those are uh, a part of our run game for us. Okay, within each one of those, and this will make sense whenever I show the grid here in just a second, uh, we're going to carry four different types of plays. So the fastball is going to be our absolute favorite play against the opponent's base defense for the given formation. So whatever formation we're in, we're going to carry a fastball, strong run, a fastball, weak run, a fastball, quick game, a fastball, drop back, and a fastball uh, screen, right? The next column over, we're going to carry curveball. Curveball is still the fastball. It's still the fastball concept, but it's going to protect the fastball somehow. So it's the same scheme disguised by a formation adjustment, a motion, a tag, something that's going to change the picture of that play for the defense. Third is the changeup. Uh, so we treat the changeup when the defense changes to stop our fastball. How do we change? What play are we going to go to? What wrinkle are we going to go to? Um, so when they change, how do we change? And then lastly, the strikeout. Um, the strikeout for us are gadgets, shots, constraint plays built off of the fastball. So maybe if outside zone is our fastball, uh, the strikeout might be outside zone reverse, right? Or maybe it's um, outside zone play action post or something like that. Um, so that, that's kind of the four different types of plays that we're going to carry within our strike map game planning process. So this is the grid that I signed about. It makes a little more sense here. You can see on the left, we've got our strong run, weak run, quick game, drop back and screen. Here on the top, we've got our fastball, curveball, change up and strike out. Up top, we've got a picture of the defense. So for us, this two by two, 10 personnel set is called shoot. Um, we're going to put the defense in the position of their base alignment. Uh, this particular week, it looks like we were playing a 3-3 stack, three safety defense. Okay, so we're going to line them up uh, so that we can see them where we expect the defense to be as we're building in the plays that go in these slots here. Okay, uh, something else you'll notice, each one of these positions has uh, letters and, and symbols beneath them. Those are the player grades that our uh, assistant coaches have come up with. So our wide receiver coach, uh, we, we talked about, we said, we don't want to come up with a huge, big scattering report. We feel like that gets lost with the kids a lot of times. So what are the two most important things that you need your guys to know about that defender? Um, so our wide receiver coach, what he wants his guys to know is how well are they at collisioning, whether that is, uh, you know, rerouting or if that's um, block destruction. And then how well are they, how well do they cover so they're going to be graded on each of those things. You see equal signs here. That means that they are um, what they are expected to be. Um, they're, they're what a high school player should be. Okay. If they've got a plus sign, you see over here, we got a plus sign. That means they're better at that than what we would expect a high school player to be. If there was a minus sign, you'd see that means that they are worse than what we would expect the average high school player to be. So we can look at that and, and kind of see where do we want to attack the coverage, not just based on the coverage scheme or the, the shell of the defense, but also based on the talent of that particular player. Okay, you see the same thing there with our linebackers uh, and our defensive line. Our linebackers are graded on, uh, outside linebackers are on speed and physicality. Inside linebackers are on rush, so like pass rush and pursuit. Um, our defensive line, our, our, our O-line guy wants them to know uh, how well they are at push and pursuit. So how well do they get up the field and how well do they pursue the ball? So they're graded on those things. So not only are our players able to see those grades, but we use them when we're uh, game planning. You know, schematically, maybe we really like to run to the right, but if that guy's a plus plus, maybe it's not as good a run. Maybe we need to run something different or, or read that guy or, uh, you know, maybe trap him or something along those lines. So that's kind of the, the top there. And then this is the grid down at the bottom that we're filling in plays. Um, when we're looking at formations, we, you know, we, like every offense, we've got a few formations that we're going to carry every week. And then we change in and out other formations. Like I said, we're aiming for eight to 10 formations. One way we know that if a formation is going to make it into the game plan is if we can fill up the entire fastball column. If we're having trouble coming up with a fastball column um, for that week, that formation is probably not a good formation for us. We're not going to carry it that week. Okay, next, looking at one that's filled in here. Um, you can see we may not fill in every single box, and, and that's good. That's okay. That's we don't want to force plays in. This one's actually pretty full compared to what we normally are. Like I said, we're going to always make sure we can fill up all the fastballs because if we can't fill up all the fastballs, it's probably not a good formation for us that week. Um, 
and then we're going to curveball everything. But if we don't have a good changeup or they don't have a, they haven't shown much of a changeup, we may not carry all five changeups. Like you can see here with our screen, we don't have a curveball or a changeup. Um, with our strikeout, we may not have a shot or a gadget built in off of every single play every single week, right? That would be, uh, you know, if we had eight formations and five strikeouts per formation, that'd be 40 strikeout plays. We're not going to be able to carry that many. We're not going to be able to practice that many. We're not going to be able to um, call that many in a game. So it's okay to leave spots blank. You know, we're not going to force a play in just to fill the spot. So that's kind of an example of what our strikeout play would look like uh, at the end of Sunday. Okay, so this next page just kind of um, for my use uh, and, and our other coaches use for scripting. So this is our play menu. We put all of those, um, I guess I should say here, explain this. Whenever we're doing our picture here and filling in these, these cubes, these grids, everything is left hash. So once we're on left hash, all of these plays are left hash plays for us. Then when we go to the next one here, um, the play menu, you can see that this is split up and we'll have the left hash version and the right hash. So we've just taken that strike amount um, card, taken the picture off of it and put in the plays only. So you can see here um, on this particular week, we actually had 12 formations. That's too many. We try to stay away from doing that. Um, but that would be our play menu. Then we can use this play menu to script off of. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are like I am. By the end of this week, my play menu is highlighted. It's colored in every single different color. You know, uh, maybe yellows for all the plays we practice on Monday and greens, all the plays we practice on Tuesday and red are plays we need to make sure and come back and hit again or, or vice versa. So. Um, this is just our play menu that we use for scripting purposes as we are practicing throughout the week. 